Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to present to you as part of the Plant Genetic Resources Oral Sessions. I wish I could join you in person. My name is Vivian Bernal, and I'm one of the maize curators at the North Central Regional Plant Introduction Station in Ames, Iowa. My presentation today will focus on different approaches to evaluate the lifespan of maize germplasm regenerations. The North Central Regional Plant Introduction Station in Ames is part of the USDA's National Plant Germplasm System, which includes 20 germplasm repositories and laboratories across the United States of America. The maize collection contains almost 20,000 accessions, most of those being cultivated maize, but also including wild zea relatives, trypsicum species, and 16 accessions of quakes. We break down cultivated maize into four smaller groups. Ordered from smallest to largest, they are gem lines, expired PVPs, inbreds, and populations, which includes both breeding populations and land races. Each year we distribute between 14,000 and 26,000 packets of maize germplasm to the maize community. Populations, shown here in yellow, make up about 80% of the maize collection, as well as 80% of available accessions. However, just 30% of distributed accessions in 2020. Conversely, expired PVP accessions, shown here in the lighter teal color, make up just 3.2% of the maize collection, but account for 26% of distributed packets. About 77% of the maize collection is currently available for distribution, and approximately 80% of the collection is backed up at the National Lab for Genetic Resources Preservation in Fort Collins, Colorado. We've made steady progress over the last 10 years, making more accessions available, as well as increasing the proportion of the collection that is backed up. However, at our current growth rate, it will take about 15 years to reach 90% availability of our current collection. This does not account for growth in the collection that is projected to happen as we incorporate more expired PVPs um, and other material into our active collection. So our goal is to improve the efficiency of germplasm management by reducing the number of regenerations needed over time. Each regeneration must be managed in the field, pollinated, harvested, processed, and characterized. And each regeneration is a potential point to introduce contamination or genetic drift. So we're aiming to grow a seed supply that is approximately equal to the demand for each accession. Demand includes the amount of seed needed for safety duplication, maintenance viability tests, customer seed orders, plus future regenerations. Supply is affected by the number of seeds planted, the number of pollinations made, the proportion of successful pollination, healthy ears, as well as the seed longevity. The first two can be controlled by the curation team, and the last three may be predicted based on historical data. As a curator, I have access to two large data sets that I thought would be helpful for understanding seed demand, seed inventory and seed orders. And I propose that viability data, in addition to regeneration efficiency measures, such as the number of seeds planted, pollinations made, ears harvested, et cetera, could be used to estimate and refine seed supply. Some of the audience may be familiar with Grin Global, the database that the National Plant Germplasm System has developed and uses for germplasm management and distribution. Our seed storage team uses a number of inventory actions to document the lifespan of a seed lot. So I wrote a SQL query to extract all of the actions that included seed counts. This includes the amount of seed made available in red, anytime the amount of seed in a jar was reviewed, count reviewed shown in gold, when low germination was noted for a seed lot, when seed lots became unavailable, and the current inventory of a seed lot shown in green. So essentially each series of connected lines in this figure is the history of one jar of seed. I then set the first data point of each seed lot to time zero and fit a line to the action data points. 
I extracted the slope of each line, resulting in a very skewed data set, which I then log transformed. The log transformation provided a more in-depth look at what we generally see in our annual report of seed distributions. The change in inventory of the gem lines, expired PVPs and inbreds is relatively uniform and fast compared to the distribution of the populations. Some populations are in high demand and distributed uh, very frequently, while others have very little distribution history over the last uh, 20 years. Wild relatives have a similarly large distribution, um, but with much less data from which we can make projections. So this method of using inventory actions allowed me to look at 6,603 maize accessions with data that was specific to an individual seed lot. The inventories had an average of 10 years of data and a maximum of 24.5 years of data. It was a good starting point and gave me a general idea for the shape of the data. But I realized that instead of looking at the effective demand on inventory, I could calculate cumulative demand directly from orders processed through Green Global. I wrote another SQL query for order items, pulling all orders filled over the last 30 years. As with the inventory actions, I set the first order as time zero and fit a line, extracted the slope and log transformed the slope, this time also uh, making it the negative of the log slope, so the numbers were comparable to the other data set. This gave me a much larger set of data, more than 17,000 accessions, with an average of 22 years of order data history. However, you can see, even in these small inset figures, that the resulting patterns of the two data sets are very similar. I then used the mean and standard deviation of each group to estimate 30 year seed supply values with one standard deviation shown in blue and orange, meeting the recorded de demand for 85% of accessions in the group and two standard deviations shown in gray and yellow, meeting the projected demand for 98% of accessions in the group. Using these estimates, let's look at how much seed we've produced on regenerations over the last 15 years. So I was expecting to find out that we were growing far too much seed on most accessions, which is clearly not what this graph supports. According to the values identified in the last slide, the red boxes should be our target ranges for regenerations. However, I think the conclusion to draw here is that perhaps we need to identify more subgroups. For example, there's a group of about 300 maize inbreds that are requested several times each year. These could be designated as high demand inbreds. Um, similarly, maize populations might be split into breeding populations, tropical land races, and temperate land races. More groups may be useful for setting broad targets, but this analysis has provided specific demand values for more than 95% of the collection. We can use that data now to set a conservative threshold of how much seed to keep on hand. Our seed storage is not infinite, and with this data, we can make some more confident housekeeping decisions. It is clearly unnecessary to keep a seed supply of almost 2,000 years for an accession. We can also use this data to identify accessions that will soon be unavailable and project resources that we will need in the future. And in the long term, perhaps we can refine the data to tailor the number of plants or hand pollinations that are needed to reach our target supply. Of course, we're not done refining the analysis and we hope our projections will continue to improve. One of the first questions to tackle is if the demand of an accession is linear. We suspect not, at least for the PVP accessions. They likely have a very high demand for the first one to three years they are released, and then very low demand into the future. The second question we hope to ask is what is the lifespan based on viability? 
Luckily, our colleagues at CIMIT have recently published a paper on this, concluding that on average, a seed lot remains above 85% viability for about 38 years at four degrees Celsius. However, there is increasing pressure for germplasm and banks to move more of the, the collections into minus 20 degrees Celsius storage. What would the lifespan there be? Perhaps greater than 100 years? I'd like to close by reiterating a few take home points. First, the maize collection will continue to grow and we must continue to develop methods to improve germplasm regeneration efficiency to make more germplasm and data available to our stakeholders. We seek partnerships to increase the availability of maize germplasm, especially our wild relatives. If you have any questions or comments, please contact me at the email address I've included on this slide. Thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of the session.